I can definitely see why other more professional YouTubers when they're doing a save like this would just split up the international and club stuff completely. But, you know, there we are. Guten Abend everyone and willkommen to the start of season 6 of Careering Onwards and our first season in charge of Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Bundesliga, the first time that I have ever managed on Football Manager in Germany. I'm absolutely very excited, looking forward to this one. And it's been a pretty exciting journey so far, this is our third club side, we have previously managed Cambridge United and Leicester City in England, we have now taken the step abroad we had a bunch of offers if you watched the last episode it was a little bit confusing but we did have interviews with uh, with a variety of sides including Villarreal, uh, Schalke which was probably my preference and Barcelona which would have been nice too but we were never going to get but the only offer we actually got was from Borussia Mönchengladbach and I'm pretty happy with it that is where we are now we'll go through the club in a second obviously last episode was also taken up with the European Championships with France um, if you didn't watch it, go and watch it. It was it was very dramatic. But domestic football is our focus again, and we are at Borussia Mönchengladbach. It was, and I think it was a bit of a it's an interesting challenge, an interesting uh, interesting situation that we find ourselves in. It's it, it's uh, obviously we could have stayed at Leicester, but I wanted to I wanted to go to a club that was in European football. We I mean we I didn't really apply for anything other than the Barcelona job. We kept getting offers from these kind of clubs, so I figured we might as well take one of them. And it's Mönchengladbach that we have ended up in, and they are a team who has uh, well, been around for a very long time, over 120 years of existence, and a pretty you know, stable time of it in the Bundesliga for the last decade or so. In the game world of this save, uh, the best they did was in the first season, they finished in third place, and since then, slight decline down to ninth, uh, but then last season they did finish in sixth and thus have qualified for the Europa League, although that wasn't good enough for the board. Uh, we'll look at the expectations again in a second, but they're a club with uh, quite a lot of history in Germany, uh, a club that has won pretty much everything, um, but the most dominant period was in the 70s, winning um, five Bundesliga titles in the 70s, a lot of runners up as well. Um, since then, the best they've done is in third place, as we just seen 2020 as well as 2015, have won the Europa League back in the 70s as well, or the UEFA Cup as it then was, uh, some DFB Pokal wins most recently in 1995, and indeed the runners up in the Champions League. So a club that's had a lot of history, and now he's a sort of relatively stable, solid Bundesliga side. A good opportunity for us to hopefully kick on, uh, both in terms of our own career and in terms of the club as well. And the board expectation for us in the league this season in the Bundesliga is to qualify for the Champions League, which means we will need to finish in the top four. They want us to reach the knockout round of the Europa League. I want to try and do better than that. And semi-finals of the DFB Pokal. I want to try and do better than that as well. We've already won our first round match, which we'll look at in a moment. But let's just have a quick check on who has won the Bundesliga in the save. The reigning champions are actually RB Leipzig. Bayern Munich finished in third, but they didn't sack their manager, who is Jurgen Klopp, um, as we have established previously. That's probably why they didn't sack him. But yeah, they didn't win last season. It was Leipzig. Uh, they've won only three of the five titles in the game. Dortmund winning it in the third season. And quite a mixture of teams behind them. So this is going to be it's going to be interesting. I think we've got a good chance of at least contending for it this season. Um, and the squad we've got is pretty good. We'll go through the full squad in a minute, but let's have a look at the transfers first of all. I have signed a lot of players, um, more than I was anticipating, but I was a little bit worried about squad depth. I think a lot of the players in the starting lineup were really quite solid. But let's have a look and see who has gone out and who has come in. Right, we'll go through the outs super quickly because they're not going to be players you're necessarily familiar with. Rennie Bergold, uh, Regen, gone on loan to Augsburg because... We've got someone better in as a left back. He's physically very good, technically not great. We've also lost Connor. I mean, I know it's not Nob. I know it's, it's well, the fact that it's up here. It's pronounced Nos, um, but well, I want to say that. I want to say anyway. He's gone to Cork City on a free. Victor Guzman. Uh, these all three of these players were sold before I got here. But Victor Guzman, a relatively decent Mexican attacking midfielder, could have been quite useful for us. Uh, but he was already sold before we got here to Al Shabab. And then there's four players who I have actually let go myself. Uh, Radovan uh, Sushnajar, uh, who we looked at uh, in the last episode. Really high potential, really good striker. Has got everything you need, except for the fact that he has nine finishing, which for me is an issue. We received a bid, a low ball bid from RB Leipzig, the champions, and um, I rejected it because it wasn't very good. Um, I was hopeful to maybe sell him anyway, but then he wanted a new contract, which I said no because he wanted crazy money. And considering I was never going to use him, I said no. He kicked up a fuss. We offered him out. 3.5 million. I think we got conned. 
I think we got con, but at least the club made a profit on him. And obviously he was never going to play anyway. Carlos Gruizo, uh, Ecuadorian defensive midfielder. Pretty solid, actually, but he was upset about stuff from before I got here. So he has left to go to Al Ali. Mauro Susai, another young regen. We've got a lot of regens. Not many of them are great. Um, he's another left back who we have let go. He's gone to Mainz for, what was it? 4.4 million. That was one that was kind of done by the board and I kind of didn't notice it, but I'm not massively concerned. The marking's not great. Positioning's not great either. And then Marcos Sinesi has also gone as well. Italian centre-back. He's gone to Fenerbahce. Kicked up a lot of a fuss. He was, he was upset about a variety of things. They've made a massive loss on him. 7.75 million, but decent. I would have, wouldn't have minded keeping him. Passing of 10 is an issue, but otherwise he wasn't too bad. But there you go. So in terms of the ins then, we bought in quite a few players, we spent quite a lot of money, uh, but also brought in quite a few old friends. Uh, this man who was signed by the board, Regen Amir uh, Mokhmati, um, decent-ish midfielder, some nice attributes overall, some relatively good potential. I just like the fact that he's got a grey beard at the age of 17. But we'll go in reverse order of price and, well, first of all, an old friend, an old friend. We never signed him at Leicester. But we needed a third choice striker here, and I can't think of anyone better. Adam Ida joins us from Stoke City for £800,000. They've made a bit of a profit on him. It's Norwich's loss, though. And he's, he still looks really good, as far as I'm concerned, from an attributes perspective. Obviously, if you've been watching this save since the start, you will know. An absolute legend in our time at Cambridge United, including, well, 21 goals, 31 goals, 17 goals. He's, he's not necessarily a top-level striker, uh, but uh, he's, he's, he's more than decent. Never played for Norwich in the season after we left Cambridge, but was then sold to Stoke and got to 8 in 23 before getting a big injury. Bit concerning, he's had two hip injuries last season, out for a total of six months. So that's probably going to happen in a few days' time, but he's here. We're paying him a wage. It's just nice to see a friendly face. Also joining us, an already already injured Thomas Basilla, 2.2 million pounds signed from RB Leipzig, I believe. Yes, we're actually signing a player from them. Decent-ish, 25-year-old French centre-back. Some nice attributes, pretty well-rounded. Not not much to write home about, but not anything really to complain about. Decent potential as well. Was just really cheap, and we needed a couple of extra squad options in terms of, of centre-back coverage. And speaking of squad options at centre-back coverage, James James Tarkowski, a man who we basically never played at Leicester, has joined us here as an emergency backup. Again, this is kind of this is a panic signing. Um, I feel that the game hates him this year. He is absolutely terribly rated in every save I've played. Always really low value, all sorts of stuff. Attributes-wise, he's really good. I don't get why the game thinks he's really bad. Uh, did he do something to the? to the uh, researchers at SI. Anyway, 2.5 million. It, I mean, he did play a bit for us at Leicester. He, he's just, he's just, he's a reliable guy. There's one more player that we've signed from an old club. We'll get to him in a second. But before that, Alessio Cragno, always a bit concerned about our goalkeeping situations, as we'll see shortly. He has joined us from Fiorentina. 9 million pounds, I think potentially rising to, yeah, 9.75. But I think that is an absolute bargain for what we have got here. I have used him in another save this year, and he was he's pretty good. Um, but attributes-wise, outstanding from a goalkeeper. I would say 16 reflexes, 16 one-on-one, 16 handling, 17 communication, and 16 command of area, 16 concentration as well. He's put in Callum Burton to shame. Um, I think he could be very, very good for us indeed. Uh, we, we're not, did I say we signed him from Fiorentina? From Atalanta, he starts the game at, at Cagliari and has done pretty well in Italy. And the last player that we've signed from an old club, Josh Tymon. I wanted another friend, another another friendly face. We needed another left back. We've got a decent first choice left back, but he's not amazing. Um, we the, the backup left back situation was well, you saw we loaned him out, not very good. We needed somebody, and Josh Tymon was pretty much surplus to requirements at Leicester. Didn't do amazingly for us last season, actually, all things considered. Um, 6.88 is not good, but he's still quite young. He's still got a potential. £15 million is the fee. I think he could do quite well in Germany. And again, just I wanted, I wanted some friends. We're, we're in a foreign country. I do speak a bit of German. I've got a GCSE in German, but it was only a B. So I just need, needed someone else I could talk to, too. And you know, I trust Josh. And then the two big signings we have made for the first team. First of all... 
Andrea Pinamonti joins us from Lazio, one of the teams who did actually offer us an interview sort of before the end of last season, uh, which we did we did uh, go to, as well as Valencia, I think it was, getting all kinds of job offers, uh, or at least interview offers. But anyway, he has joined us for £25 million, pounds, 25 years old, £1 million per year of life. And I think he is very, very good. Again, striker was a bit of an issue for us. Uh, we have one decent-ish striker, but not really anyone else too much. And I think Pinamonti could be the solution to that problem. 16 finishing, I love. 15 composure, physically very good too. Really just well-rounded. He's got pretty much everything you'd need. His goal-scoring record in the game is not good. Just three for Lazio last season, eight the year before. Did quite well for Genoa, though. So maybe in Germany. I mean, Italian strikers often have quite a bit of success in Germany, so maybe this is another one. And then our final signing. There are a few other ones potentially going to happen, but the final signing confirmed for now and our biggest signing, £30 million was a transfer listed Matteo Guendouzi from Arsenal. 25 years old. Very, very exciting. The only real issue, and it's not much of one, would be his marking of 12. Everything else, outstanding. Tackling 15, passing 15, vision 15, work rate 17. Just outstanding. And he's listed as a world-class midfielder. To get a player like this for 30 million quid, and for less than £100,000 a week as well, I think is very, very good. Midfield was definitely our strongest area, but we did need an extra body. We could have gone cheap. I went big, and I think it's probably worth it. He's a natural as a box-to-box -box midfielder. I'm probably going to start playing him as the deep-line playmaker because I think he can do that really nicely, uh, but he can play in all three of the midfield positions we use anyway. So, yeah, I think just a really worthwhile addition. So let's just go through the squad that we that we have now with the signings and the players that are already here. We'll get to know them as we go um i think yeah i think we've got a really quite solid decent squad overall i'm pretty happy with the business we've done i'm pretty happy with the players that were already here this is what i'm going to go with as my first choice lineup for now uh Kragno and goal um then we've got a uh, domagoj braderick at left back we, you know, marking and tackling of 10 each is not great but decent decent player and obviously we've got josh timing as well the center backs that we have to start with uh matthias ginter we did in the previous episode. He wanted. He was upset that he, we didn't have continental football, even though we do. Um, he wanted a new contract. I f I forgot to give him one amid the excitement of European uh, Championship action, and so he's a bit upset about that. But I think he'll get over it um, if we keep doing relatively well. Nico Elvedi is going to be alongside him. Um, looks really quite decent. Uh, two decent centre backs here. We've got Zeko Kelic at right back. Again, it looks pretty pretty decent. We're going to maybe bring in another backup. Guendouzi is going to be coming into midfield. We've got Denis Sakaria, who is, I think, really very, very solid, very versatile midfielder, physically excellent, could be brilliant as a box-to-box -box in this system, I think. And then in the Mazala bowl, Luka Ivanusic, um, Croatian. Again, just a lot of nice attributes. Midfielders here were very, very good. We've got Matthias Egerstein as well, who can kind of play all three roles too. A bit more defensive, but still very solid. Then the wing situation, right-hand side, we're absolutely covered. Uh, Breelan Bolo, obviously, was, uh, well, frequently a very expensive, um, not necessarily wonder kid, but a player that developed really, really nicely in previous FMs. Obviously, had a massive injury in real life, um, but has moved to Mönchengladbach, but stayed at Mönchengladbach, having moved there in real life. And I think looks really quite decent. Not the best technically in every single area, but it's got pretty much everything I would want from a winger. Still physically quite good. I think he could do really well. Can play as a striker as well. Callum Hudson-Odoi, who they signed in-game last summer, obviously. We know all about him from Chelsea Challenge. Not, not the best technically in this save, but still pretty good. And then we're going to have Pinamonte up front. We've got some decent squad options. Uh, Silas Wamangatuka, I think that's how you say it, is uh, it's going to be our backup striker. Looks quite good. And um, The only areas that I'm concerned about, as I said, is back up right back because I don't think Lewis Bayer is particularly all of that and then we don't have another left footed winger um, which I would prefer we've got Haruki Abe who can play there he's very good in that position but he's fully right footed we could play him as an inside forward that's a potential option or an inverted winger perhaps and we may well do that if we can't get anyone else in but overall not too bad I like the fact that in Germany squad registration from a domestic point of view 
I think like France as well, you can basically just register whoever you want. You have a massive squad allowance, which is fantastic. And also uh, the bench, you can have just whoever you want on the bench. I think it's nine actually. So not as much as Italy, but a lot better than England. We need to, we need to change that up in England. It's, it's not very good. Right then, we have played one, well we've gone through pre-season, we've won all of those games, and we've played one competitive match so far, it's the first round of the DFB Pokal against Westphalia Rheinen, and it was a 5-0 win, it'd be pretty embarrassing if we hadn't won it, but Pinamonte got a goal on his debut, Ginter scored, Ivan Usic, and then Wamagatuka got a goal two goals off the bench for a comprehensive victory. In that one, we will be playing Hamburg in the second round, which is difficult. They are in the Bundesliga too, but that's a bit more of a tricky tie. But today, then, we will be playing Mainz, our opening league game in the Bundesliga. And according to the media, we are predicted to finish in fifth this season, which is slightly better than what they did last season. And just to check in on some previous things, we've, we've seen what Adam Eid is up to. He's back here with us now. We have brought in the two guys, well, two of the guys who were with us from the, uh, well, from our days at Cambridge, not from the start. Danny Elliott, we signed him at Cambridge, but he has joined us again as a coach here, as has Mark Bonner, our assistant manager at Cambridge and Leicester. He's not my assistant manager here because, as we saw last time, David uh, Credidlo is just really good, so I'm not going to not going to replace him. He's fantastic, but Mark Bonner is still here. He's perfectly happy as a coach. He's not he's not very good, but it's just nice to have him here. He's, he's a good friend. And just quickly as well, Leicester have appointed John Robertson as my replacement. He was previously at Hearts, starts the game as the Inverness manager, I believe. He's been on a bit of a Scottish journey there. He's got himself the Leicester job, which I think is uh, well, well done, John. Pretty good start to the season for them as well. They have He's, he's sold quite a few of us. Alexis Blin's gone, obviously. We signed Tymon and Tarkovsky. Uh, but yeah, Alexis Blin's gone. There's a few other players that might look to move as well. Anyway, with all that said and done, let's get into some football. Our second competitive match, our first league match in charge of Borussia Mönchengladbach. You've already seen the team. I'm not going to go through them all again. You've already seen the team. I'm not going to go through them again. Same tactics as before, of course, because I'm a creature of habit. Let's go into it against Mainz at home. This would be a great match to win. They're a really, you know, they're a solid side. I'm not sure they're going to be competing for the league title, but they are a solid side. If we can get the win today, that would be really nice. A few players of some note. They've got a Milson Fernandez. They've got a Mateta on the left-hand side is, is decent. They've got a region up front. There's a lot of decent regens in the Bundesliga. Uh, Tashuna, uh, finishing of 10, but otherwise quite good. He'll probably get a hat-trick. That's just how things work. And they've got Hemmerich at left-back, who is he's not bad from a defensive point of view. But I think our squad is strong. We should we should be winning this one. I expect nothing but a win. Um, I don't speak German yet. I my the the, car, the our manager speaks um, because of our international jobs. We speak French, we speak Spanish, and we speak Danish as well as English. Don't speak German yet, but I think it's only it's only a matter of time if we've learned all those other languages too. Okay, so highlight first highlight of the episode: Callum Hudson-Odoi with a free kick, and it's not too far away. This first half is rapidly disappearing, as is the sort of usual style. So far, no one's doing especially well, um, but there's, there's half-time. We are mostly in control, I think. We're not in control of possession. Um, I'm going to say I'm far from pleased with what I've seen, because I've not really seen anything, so that's probably true. Yeah, we're definitely losing the possession battle, which is interesting, because that's normally not been the case with with our two previous teams, and indeed our international teams as well, apart from Venezuela. But this nothing, nothing is happening at all. We're going to have to make some changes, and Bolo and hudson Adoy are not doing anything of note really. Kellick is also not particularly particularly thriving. Uh, Braderick is having a, a good game but he's also got a bit of an injury so it might be worth making a change there. I'm going to bring on Ignacio La Quinta on the right hand side and then we can, well, let's bring let's bring Arbe on for hudson Adoy. See, what, see see how he does. Free kick from Ivanusic and it's gone in. Well bit of a bit of a starry highlight but Nico Alvedi up from centre back to head home from the free kick. Every highlight has been a free kick. This one finally does pay off and we've got the advantage, which we, I think we probably kind of deserve. But a chance for Mainz to come forwards immediately after we have scored. Uh, back to the goalkeeper, Muller. Bit of pressure on him. But so they, well, they've lost out. Pinamonti stolen in and a debut goal he got in the cup, and now a debut goal. He got in the league. Fantastic finish from the Italian. We've seen, we have not seen anything from him really, all game. But reads the play brilliantly. Picks up the loose ball, 
runs through, and that is a fantastic finish. What a start he has had in a Borussia Mönchengladbach shirt. Excellent stuff. This one is looking done. Always nice to get off to a good start. Hopefully we can keep it up. We'll bring on Josh Tymon for his debut because Brad Arish has got a bit of a bit of a knock. Right, injury time is uh, ticking away. There's still a few minutes left. Tymon with the ball from a throw. A third would be would be really nice just to see it. Arbe on the left hand side and well time has been flattened by Milson Fernandez who's got himself a red card and I think that is a good night Mainz. Indeed it is a 2-0 win. Not the most eventful opening league game but I will take three points all day long. Excellent stuff. Good solid performance. Good way to start things off. A pretty solid way to start off proceedings. Well, there we go. Excellent stuff. Um, let's have a look at the league table at this very early stage. We are in third after a whopping one game played. Lots of teams haven't played yet. For example, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, Bayer Leverkusen, teams that are going to probably be better than us this season. But we can only do what we can do, and that's a good start to life here in München Gladbach. So next time, then, we will be here for, well, it's going to be a Europa League game because we are in the Europa League. We've got to, got to make the most of our first season in Europe. Probably the first game and Wolfsburg, maybe, maybe not. Maybe the second game. We might go a little bit further. I don't know who's going to be in the group. It depends who's in the group. If this is a massive team that's going to be a, a very interesting match, then it will be this one. Otherwise, it will be one of the other ones, probably the second one. But we'll, we'll see what happens when the draw is made. We'll see. We've got, we've got Dortmund coming up in October. That's going to be pretty decent. We might pair that one with a Europa League match. We'll see We'll see what happens when the group draw is made. Bayern Munich as well. Probably going to have to play them too. But there we are. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss the rest of the season. Let me know what you think we're going to do. How well are we going to do in the league and in the cups this season? Can we maybe win something? I'm not too sure. But thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.